All right, so welcome back into the metaverse today. We're going to be talking about NFTs and the future of toys and how all this might play together. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Metaverse Insider. Joining me today is Will Weinrob, who is the co-founder and CEO of OnChain Studios, makers of Crypt Toys. Great to have you on the show. Awesome, Paul. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you being I, here. Excited. Yeah, I, I have so many questions on this, Will. Uh, I have two young children, so I'm in the midst of just about every kind yeah. of toy you can imagine. And what's fun right now is we had a chance, to obviously, you know, whether you're in the gaming side of things or you're actually in the character side of things, they are uh, constantly educating me on so many very cool things about toys today. So I want to talk about kind of the future of where this is going. Before we get started on that, uh, tell me a little bit about Crypt Toys, what it is, how you guys kind of uh, rolled this into a blockchain experience. Sure. So Crypt Toys was actually inspired by my nine-year-old daughter, you know, my, my prior company a few years back. And, you know, after I was selling the company, I was working from home one day and my daughter was obsessed with these things called blind bags and surprise toy unboxings. And oh, yeah. we, were, we were spending, you know what those are, right? So, uh, <laughs> you know, we were spending hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on those things. And, you know, in 2018, you know, this is right when like crypto kitties and NFTs really starting to first right. bubble up. You know, I saw my daughter kind of play with these toys. She would collect them, but they would just kind of sit on the shelf and just collect dust after she would open them up and find which one she got. So for me, uh, the really the light bulb moment happened when she opened one and she said, Dad, I got the ultra rare. I found the ultra rare. This is the one I was looking for. Uh, and this was right at the same time Crypto Kitties was bubbled up. So I thought, oh, my goodness, here is this you know, huge segment of the toy industry. It's all predicated on collectability and scarcity. And I'm looking at my daughter, we're spending all this money on this stuff and she doesn't use it after she opens it. They just collect right. dust over there. So I asked her, I said, sweetheart, what if I were to make you the digital version of these toys where you can collect them, chase after the rare ones, but then when you get them, you can actually do things with them, you know, play games with them, interact with them. Would that be something you'd be interested in? So she's like, oh my God, dad, that'd be amazing. I'd love that. So we got started a little side project called Cryptoys. And what Cryptoys is, is we're building the world's premier digital toy company. Uh, and basically, uh, you know, trying to think of like, if a toy company was created today from scratch uh, and it was digital first and NFT native, what would that toy company look like? And then how do you imagine the concept in a fully digital world? How do you play with digital toys? So we're building games and apps and experiences around these toys so that people can play with toys and think of toys in a whole new way uh, that's not really necessarily bounded by the concept of physics and plastics and things like that. So we're doing a lot of fun stuff, uh, you know, kind of taking the toy industry, uh, hopefully the next level with this platform and what we're building. So, that, yeah, that's a little bit about the origin yeah. story and how we think about it. I like it. it. I, yeah, and, and you know, I, I completely sympathize with you. I have, uh, I don't know, maybe an entire room of LOLs uh, that are the balls that they're doing all of these blind bag unboxing with my daughter. And, uh, it, you know, it's interesting, too, because she's really into, really kind of evolving into a gamer now, and she's very young. But, yes. you know, she's starting to understand the value of digital assets and how mm -hmm. they, you know, play a role in the game how that's starting to equate to something that she wants to kind of learn more about. Totally. And I completely get where you guys are going with this. When you look at the NFT in integration into, especially toy making and in general, I mean, there's some big players that there are. You, obviously, we, your partnership with Mattel, but there's a ton of big toy companies out there. What would keep those companies from really kind of making a full charge into the NFT space? And... How would you guys kind of respond to that? Yeah, I don't think, you know, first of all, there has to be a want and a des desire to kind of disrupt your own business, right? You know, in, right. in essence, you know, there's a lot of these legacy toy manufacturers are uh, physical toy uh, manufacturers right. and they're producing plastic toys. And then all of a sudden you have this like blockbuster Netflix scenario where things are starting to digitize, right? Some are reluctant to change. Some want to focus on their core business, which is making tons of money, and some lean into disruption and say, hey, how can we disrupt ourselves? Because this is where the future is going. Um, so, you know, I think there are some companies that are wired that way. And, you know, this is not, in, 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 in our opinion, a winner-take-all market, just like the toy industry is not a winner-take-all market. So we welcome lots of folks to participate in the, in the industry. We think that we have a really great 
uh, product, an incredible team, incredible partnerships, as you see our partnership here with Mattel. And we think that we're really innovating in, in a very uh, smart, calculated and, and fun way for the future of toys. Um, so, you know, we just see the space getting bigger and bigger and there'll be multiple participants and we just have to stand by our product, what we do well, what we're passionate about, the partners that we work with. And at the end, of the day, bring delight to people of all ages. And if we do that, I think we'll, we'll be in good shape. I was looking at this story right here uh, that was talking about your Master of the Universe being the first Mattel toy to launch on Cryptoys. Now, I mean, you have, you know, the IP selection and opportunity here is massive. So why go yeah. with Masters of the Universe? What was the kind of the draw? Uh, well, um, so if you look at the backstory, there's, so, there's a lot of reasons. I think, you know, first off, the backstory of Cryptoys uh, themselves, and you were just playing a little bit of our origin trailer uh, a few minutes ago, uh, is that Cryptoys, the story behind Cryptoys, and we're working on an animated series and a lot of original content. The backstory of Cryptoys and the Cryptoys universe is that Cryptoys are 8-bit video game characters from 1981 that gets sucked into a wormhole and transported 40 years into the future. Uh, and they go from 8-bit 80s pixelated game characters to fully 3D animated and they get dumped in present day onto the blockchain and they have to learn about the nature of their new existence as NFTs and this whole new world that they have to kind of explore. So a lot of 80s uh, kind of aesthetics and throwbacks, so you'll see that throughout the website and our origin story and obviously What's a more iconic 1980s toy line than Master of the Universe? Arguably the most right. iconic 80s toy line of all time. Uh, and uh, if you look at the demographics of the early people that are buying, you know, uh, stuff uh, in the NFT space and that are interested in crypt toys, they are folks that were, you know, in the 80s and 90s and they grew up during those eras, right? So mm -hmm. nostalgia and the golden age of toys is a big part of our story. Uh, you know, I believe that as we grow up and become adults and, and get older, we're just constantly looking for ways to feel like a kid again. Uh, it's whether the cars that we buy, the clothes that we wear, the shoes that we wear, the people that we meet, we're constantly looking for that spark of excitement and like wonder and discovery. Uh, and we wanna bring that to folks of all ages with Cryptoys. So we're starting with Masters of the Universe just because you know I grew up on that brand. A lot of my, my co-founders grew right. up on that brand. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of the people that buy NFTs grew up on that brand. So it's just a great way to start and kind of bring something that was so iconic to all of us growing up to this new generation of toys, a great brand to kind of kick things off with. How did, how did this deal come together with Mattel? Because obviously Mattel being an iconic toy brand, you've got the evolution of what's happening within NFTs and the blocks, uh, blockchain. A lot of different applications that are kind of already looking toward or have the elements that could really kind of create IP, uh, intellectual property around toy generation. If you think about Sandbox, Axie, I can imagine those could be IP okay. brands so easily. So why and how did the Mattel partnership come about? So we were introduced to, to Mattel. We got connected by a, a mutual connection. Uh, so we started chatting with the, the folks in the leadership team at Mattel. And it was just very clear, like just right off the first couple of calls, that the way they think about the future of this industry and the way we think about this fu the future of this industry was very, very much aligned. So we just right. hit it off with Mattel uh, right off the bat. Uh, we were you know, in a fortunate position where we talked with lots of different toy companies uh, in the industry. And it, it was just you know, clear from the get-go that Mattel was the ideal partner that we wanted to work with. And, and thankfully, that feeling was mutual. And you know, when they saw what we were doing, they, you know, and Mattel, you know, a company like that, they get pitched by a lot of different uh, sure. platforms, as you mentioned, some examples, right, for their IP. And it was a comment that you know, we, we, didn't, we don't take lightly when, when, when we showed Mattel we're working on, you know, they said they're like, nobody is doing toys like you guys. Yeah. Like, you know, there's yeah. a lot of folks that are trying to get IP for NFTs, but they don't understand the toy industry and what makes a toy a toy. We use this word in the industry called toyetic, that something has to feel toyetic. Uh, and, and, and that's a feeling and an emotion you get throughout the purchasing experience, through the unboxing experience, through playing with your toy and then all that stuff. And, and we really take a, a thoughtful approach from start to finish around what the toy experience should look like. And I think that's what separated us from the pack with all these other NFT brands is 
we're focused on toys. That's our bread and yeah. butter. We're not focused on like any, like, you know, being a company that just wants to get as much IP as possible. We want to sure. work with uh, brands that are in the toy industry and, and brands and IP that have a toyetic feel and, and angle. So that's our focus. And we just double down on our efforts there and make the best product possible. And, and thankfully that led to great partnerships like Mattel and some other ones that we'll announce hopefully in the That'll near be future. Cool. Uh, yeah. So I was looking at your Twitter account, um, and I, th I thought this was a good example is, but how do you play with digital toys? You know, that's where the world right. of gaming and apps come in. You've built your own, you know, interactive platform around this. Do you think this is really kind of the future? I mean, we've seen, uh, you know, people come on our channel quite a bit, you know, from metaverse aspects. We've seen everything from metaverse fashion week to, you know, creators of all types in the aspect of NFTs and where this might go. Fidgetal, you know, physical, digital applications, yeah. we believe are really going to have real use case, especially around NFT use. Do you see that being kind of the case with Cryptoys in the near future? Where kind of, which way are you going to go first? I guess you guys got a, a lot of options here. Sure. So the way we think about it is you, you have these digital toys, which are actually NFTs uh, and, and NFTs to me, it's the technology behind it. It's like you're talking about websites and web technology. Are you talking about HTTP right. all the time? You know, you're not really thinking about that. To me, what NFTs allow is like true provable ownership of an asset, right? So that's important, I think, and we can dive deeper into that later in the, in the conversation. Um, but that's number one, right? And then you have these toys that you fully own. These are, this is your collection. And how do we create cool experiences around these toys and kind of continually deliver value for uh, consumers and for holders of these toys? So the way we like to think about it is we're building this interactive world and inside this world are mini games and yep. applications. And if you see soon what we're about to release, they're basically like application and game launchers where you take your toy into a specific playset, building, experience, it launches a new game. And we're focused on building these mini games that we can constantly build fresh new experiences based on the feedback of our consumers and our and, and our customers. And, and the yeah. reason is, you know, there's a lot of people right now and, you know, they're, they're thinking about metaverse, right? And they're thinking about building these worlds, right? And I think that there's some market for that for sure but i think the majority of consumers out there don't have the time to spend two, you know eight to ten hours in a virtual world wandering around right when they think of the metaverse from a gaming standpoint they think of these like you know mmorpgs like you know world of warcraft and things like that and that's not our angle right we're building a digital toy platform and then building kind of casual gaming experiences games that we can develop within a few months time and constantly ship fresh, new, exciting experiences to our customers. So you might see like puzzle style games, you might mm -hmm. see infinity runners, you might see maze games, you might see word style games. You'll see lots of different things that you could do with these toys, idle games as, as well as active games. And then not just games, but also utility based applications. We're working, we have actually a few team members that are solely dedicated to AI and natural language processing. So don't be surprised on Cryptoys, you'll soon see an Alexa like experience with these toys on one of our applications that we build on top of the platform. That'll so be cool. We're building a yeah. yeah, we're building a myriad of stuff. And a lot of people, when they see what we're building and I show them behind the scenes stuff, they've called us the NFT native Nintendo. Uh, and, you know, at first we really didn't understand that comparison, but the more we heard it, the more we understood why, because again, we're making our own original IP and characters like Nintendo made Mario, Luigi, Zelda, Donkey Kong, then they got into entertainment, then they got into building toys and we're doing similar stuff. We have three pillars that we focus on toys, gaming, and entertainment. And we're, you know, we're going, uh, you know, pretty, uh, pretty hard on each of those. So we're really excited I about like what it. we're building. Yeah. yeah, and I think, you know, it really kind of leans to what is kind of very innovative in the space right now. And I think it has birthed some really, you know, some opportunities for some new markets, uh, which have yep. kind of already started to evolve, obviously, because of the generation that we're seeing kind of evolve into the metaverse, especially around brands and IP and what this might mean for the future. We just did a piece on um, Disney today with, you know, the evolution yes. of where maybe Matic and, and Polygon could become a big role of that how the experiences will really play into kind of the future of that. I want to talk about Barbies a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. NFTs also in, in terms of, I know you're doing a project on the Barbie component here. 
uh, in terms of you know building an IP brand component around the NFT side of things. Will this launch near the Barbie movie that's launching later this this year? What's the kind of the plan for rollout here? Can't comment on, on any other brand right now, unfortunately, outside of Masters of the Universe. Masters of our, uh, Masters of the Universe is the sole focus for Cryptoids. We are actively working with Mattel on a bunch of stuff uh, in their portfolio. Really excited about some of the initiatives and, and some of the announcements we have coming up. But right now, the, the focus is on, on Masters and uh, we'll be at Comic-Con next week uh, with mm -hmm. Mattel at the Mattel booth, just doing a ton of stuff for the Masters of the Universe line. So that's kind of really where the, the sole focus is. But we are extremely excited about Barbie, about Hot Wheels, and all the other incredible IP that Mattel has and, and the stuff that we can do with them there. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to watch. All right, let's get into yeah. the blockchain side of things. So Flow was kind of the selection that you guys went with. Mm -hmm. Kind of curious why go that route versus say something like a Wax or you know, other platforms yep. that have had, you know, you know, very significant transaction capability. Explain kind of your your strategy here. So for us, you know, you know what we're building is a mainstream platform. You know, this is sure there are going to be some NFT early adopters and crypto maxis on the platform buying these NFTs. But what, the real vision and mission of the company is to reach millions and millions of people, uh, right. and you need to do that uh, in, in 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 a system and using a blockchain that really simplifies the process as best as possible. You need to be able to use a credit card, right? I want you know, a grandmother to be able to buy a crypto toy for her grandson for Christmas, mm -hmm. right? And to do that, you know, you know, you don't want any friction on setting up a MetaMask wallet exactly. or dealing with gas yeah. fees and, and KYC and all that stuff, right? So it has to be really simple for the consumer. It has to be really, really low fees as well. Um, and just has to feel like a normal transaction. Uh, and there's also like, so, so that's one, you know, it's just like scalability and ease of use. Uh, Flow and Dapper Labs, I think they've proven that they know how to do this at scale. You've seen sure. NBA Top Shot, NFL All Day, you know, they were some of the originators with CryptoKitties mm -hmm. and, you know, built Flow to solve a lot of those scalability problems. Um, and then, so there's that. Uh, two, the way that Flow is constructed uh, as a development language, Cadence is the, uh, you know, the mm -hmm. development language of Flow. Yep. First of all, uh, it's it it, it pro provides a kind of easier on ramp for people to build and get involved in things like that. Right. Uh, and then the way that it's constructed uh, it was built very smartly for the world of gaming, uh, and particularly for us for the world of toys, right? Because what you can do with something in Flow, and I'll kind of just break it down uh, in a simple way, is you can have a parent. Uh, asset like a parent NFT, and then you could have child NFTs under it. So like you could have, for example, right. a crypto panda that has sunglasses, a sweater, is associated with a skill, and things like that. And those are kind of sub NFTs that are baked into the parent NFT. So that kind of stuff makes a lot of sense. Like how it's architected it makes a lot of sense for what we're building. We don't have to reinvent the wheel from like a programmatic standpoint. Um, and then three Dapper Labs. I just love those people over there. They're just fantastic partners. They're incredible to work with. It really feels like we have an extension of our team. You know, we, we go to Dapper for a lot of different things. We, we do co-marketing together. We, we work on business opportunities together and licensing opportunities together. Uh, anytime we have an engineering question, they're responding same day very quickly to help us. So like in a world of decentralization where everybody's on their own island doing their own things and nobody seems to look after each other, it's nice to have that kind of partnership uh, where you can kind of work together and, and do some really epic stuff, uh, you know, at the same time. So, you know, those three reasons are the main reasons that we uh, decided to go with Flow. Yeah, I think the, you know, the technical aspect of Flow and in, in what you kind of referenced there and that sub capability from an NFT architecture side of things, I think is is a big, you know, it is a big differentiator in where a lot of projects in the future, whether it's toys, fashion, all sorts of things that are going to be coming into this marketplace, I think we'll see uh, flow and others, you know, that will probably start to play into this. So very good on you guys. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about um, when you look at gameplay and what yeah. types can be expected, how parents, because this is obviously targeted at younger children, um, how parents might get involved in this. I mean, you, you've seen the explosion of the YouTube uh, toy video channels and yes. you know probably still one of the largest I mean, if you've got if anybody knows ryan you understand kind of sure. the the you know kind of the uh, phenomenon that is such 
that that whole franchise has created around just toy uh, testing, toy reveals, the whole unboxing process, all of that. How will crypto is be coming into that space? How will parents get involved? What are your thoughts on on that strategy side of it? Sure. Yeah, it's a great question. So the way we think about it, and, and, and yes, Cryptoys is building for younger audiences, but we're really building for all ages. And and I, I guess that's where the NFT native Nintendo comparison comes in, right? Because if you think of right. Nintendo, you know, kids love Mario, but we love Mario as well. Sure. And Nintendo has positioned themselves in a great way as like the accessible, family-friendly gaming console and platform, right? Yeah. Um, and we like to think of Cryptoys in a very similar way. As you can see with Masters of the Universe, that's not necessarily an IP that my kids really know about, but that's a, an IP that you know, people in their 30s and 40s and 50s really, uh, you know, take to. So we're really thinking about how to build this uh, as an all ages platform that all generations can enjoy together, parents and children alike. Uh, at the same time, you know, we're building uh, a lot of parental controls and being very thoughtful about that. So like, you know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, this is technically crypto and it's blockchain on the back end. We have to do that in a very thoughtful way, COPA compliancy and all these different things. Um, so you could think of it in a way not to get too into the weeds from a details perspective, but like, you know, when you sign up for a Netflix account, you have your parent account that can watch any show they want, but then you have your child account underneath as a sub account that has certain guidelines and it can do certain yeah. things on the platform. So we have a very similar kind of approach. So from a parenting perspective, there'll be less restrictions from buying and selling and using a wallet. And then obviously from a, you know the child's account, they could do certain things. They could play in the game with the characters and do different mm -hmm. things, but then they need parents' approval to do other stuff. And then from a gaming perspective, we're trying to create experiences and games that all ages can enjoy. So again, when, when we were growing up, like in the 80s, in the 90s and like the early days of video games, there were only a few million gamers in the world, right? People that right. owned Ataris, Sega Genesis, Nintendo, powerful PCs. You know, now if you look at the statistics, there's over 3 billion gamers around the world. And that's due to the rise of casual mobile gaming. Things like Candy Crush, Doodle Jump, yep. Angry Birds. Everybody's playing a, a game of some sort, even if it's on a console or a PC or on their phone. And take my wife, for example, my wife... I won't say her age, but she's around my age, right? And, uh, you know, she plays the last 30 minutes of her night before she goes to sleep is playing Candy Crush, right? And Candy Crush, that's a great game, very visual, bright, fun. It's got like a younger aesthetic kind of style, but she loves it. Yeah. And so do other you know, people her age. So, you know, Cryptoys is meant to kind of focus on that kind of section of gaming where, you know, it's kind of mobile style based casual gaming that anybody can enjoy parents and young children alike and experiences that are wholesome. You know, there are NFTs out there, uh, some of which that, that I own and, and I'm a fan of, but they skew more towards older audiences with adult content. You know, we talk, talk right. about DGen right. culture here, right? Cryptoys is not for that. Cryptoys is much more a family friendly kind of IP that parents and, and children can play together and, and really get into together. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we're really excited to, to launch and also take parents' feedbacks into an account. I'm a parent myself. I have three kids. So, you know, this is clearly where the world is heading, digital assets and digital items and gaming. And, you know, frankly, as a parent, I want to be able to have a seat at the table to making sure that this is done in a thoughtful way and in a thoughtful approach. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, I look at this, you know, also through the eyes of my own kids and I see so many different opportunities, especially from the NFT side of things, from the IP standards that are being set out there. What surprises me though, still to this date, um, even though NFTs to a certain extent are very new, the concept of smart contracts and non-fungible right. has been around for a little bit. And I'm still surprised at how slow some of the traditional IPs, and this goes from all the way from Hollywood Studios down to what we're seeing now in the gaming sector, obviously now into toys. And kind of obviously f fashion's kind of already moved in this direction. I would call them kind of the first mover. Do you think we are just a handful of years away or before we really start seeing mainstream adoption or how far out do you really think we're going to be before we see full on people understanding how NFTs work with IP and how all of this kind of connects? What do you think? Two, yeah, three, totally. four, five? Yeah, I think we're, we're in that window for sure. We're, we're getting closer, I think. Uh, so you really can 
start this around 2017, 2018. And, you know, Dapper Labs had a big role in this with the launch of CryptoKitties and they invented, you know, the ERC-721 standard. They actually uh, were the ones who coined the term Mm -hmm. NFT, right? So we're only four years away, uh, you know, since that kind of genesis moment. What happened in the past year is NFTs entered cultural mainstream. So like now right. everybody has kind of heard the word NFTs, right? And that only happened in the last 12 months. So now you can kind of ask, like before 2022 or, you know, late parts of 2021, you could ask most people, do you know what NFT is? Or have you heard of the term NFT? And they would say no. Now I think that has flipped and most people understand at least, you know, what the relevance is and, and how to associate NFTs. I think brands initially have a cautious approach. You know, you have a lot of publicly traded companies. You have a lot of business models out there. You, look, you have gaming companies. Like, look, there are ga- gaming companies out there and everybody asks, well, what's going to stop this company from getting into NFTs? A lot of these gaming companies are going to tell you, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They're already printing right. cash on a daily basis, right? They don't necessarily need to kind of offer that kind of stuff. So we have a little bit of a different approach. We want to give provable ownership uh, to people as we start this new gaming and toy company. And that's very meaningful, I think, for a a lot of reasons. Um, And we can get into that later, uh, why provable ownership is is such an important thing in a digital world. But um, I think we're right there because of the cultural impact it's had on the last year. You just saw a a big announcement at NFT NYC that Doodles announced that Pharrell is joining, you know, their board and becoming a chief brand officer. You know, that's a big tastemaker and a culture setter uh, in the world. These things, you know, you see a lot of, you know, big celebrities like Justin Bieber and Neymar, they make their profile pictures NFTs these days. So cultural significance is really setting in. So I think, yeah, we're in that window. I think, you know, in the next couple of years, you'll just see more people, you know, lean into this. And some brands are starting to do it. Some are apprehensive. Yeah. Every brand's going to well, need a strategy in web. Yeah. And, and I think when I look at it, you know, yes, to, uh, to the most part, we've seen successes you know, in the marketplace right now, whether it's fashion, music, you know, mm-hmm. entertainment, et cetera, uh, kind of rolling in. Then you have, pl- you know, scenarios like what Chris Brown had with his NFT collection, which was kind of a, a dud. And mm-hmm. when you see, you know, you see this, th- and this kind of gives me a little bit of a gut check when I see yeah. good entertainers that have the capability. Now, this could have been just mismanagement, could have been a whole array of things. But I'm always curious as to whether or not we're at that critical mass point or are we still on the early side of where all of this yeah. is going to go. And I think we still are on a bit on the early side. So I think that you guys are in the right place, you know, overall, uh, because I think toys, um, younger entertainment aspects, you know, the right kind of entertainers that are kind of going in that direction. Same thing with fashion, most likely will pl- fall to, you know, Gen Z and below as we start to see the evolution of kind of the future of NFT. So that's for sure the case. Let's talk about, um, you know, kind of proof of ownership for a second, because there's a lot of mm-hmm. different strategies here. Uh, there's been some amazing NFT launches. If you look at what Kevin Rose did with, with Moonbirds, you've got yes. obviously all the Dapper Labs movement. You've got Yuga Labs with the Ape collection. Mm-hmm. There's a lot happening in the space. Proof of ownership, very important. How important is it at this level, though, with, especially with younger audiences and toys? Yeah, great question. This is something I love talking about. So I'll, I'll tell you a story real quick. You know, just a few months back, uh, six months ago, it was Hanukkah. You know, we're Jewish, so we celebrate Hanukkah. And it was the eighth day of Hanukkah coming up. And typically, that's that's what happens is the, the first seven nights are smaller gifts, and the eighth night is the big, the big gift, right? So I asked my yeah. daughter, you know, and my daughter's nine. Uh, I said, sweetheart, what do you want for your big eighth night of Hanukkah gift? And without hesitation, she said, oh, I know what I want. And she runs to go get her iPad. She she opens up her favorite game and she says, dad, can you please authorize $99 of an in-app purchase in this game so she can get this bundle of items, accessories for, wow. her, okay. you know, for her game. So when I was a kid, I wanted a bike. Or a trip to Orlando, like you know, those are like the big the gifts, physicals, right? Yeah. My, daughter, my daughter wanted these digital items in this game, and yeah. it was like instantaneous. That's what she wanted, and that's where the world is heading. I think you see it with your kids. People play Fortnite; they're spending billions on on digital assets and items, For and, sure, yeah. and wearables and things like that. And it, it's interesting because you know what I would have loved to have done is I would have loved to say because we've spent lots of money on digital items over the years. I would have loved to say to my daughters, you know, sweetheart. 
why don't you take, you want $99 of, of new items, why don't you take all the hundreds that you don't use or play with mm -hmm. and sell those so you have the money to buy more items or even <laughs> yeah. yeah or even better why don't you take those hundreds of items that you don't play with anymore and donate them to charity or someone that can't sure. afford them she's unable yeah. to do neither right now and that is at a complete disconnection with in the physical world where i can tell her to go to her room and to get a box and put all the toys that she doesn't play with in a box and let's either donate them on charity or even sell them on eBay, whatever she wants to do with them, right? She has ownership over these things. And in the digital world, as it becomes more and more prevalent, they don't have the ability to do either. So right. I think that yeah. it, it, it means a lot in that sense, number one. And then two, you know, what happens with provable ownership, and we talk about this a lot in the blockchain space, but people don't think about and they think about it kind of more like tactically and being able to sell something. But there's mm -hmm. an emotional resonance and a really powerful emotional connection when you own something and it's yours, right? Uh, and you invest in something more when you know that it's yours. Like, uh, you know, there's a reason why digital games have such a, you know, a short shelf life, right? You know, remember Angry Birds was all the rage and then we never heard of Angry Birds anymore. And yeah. then there was Doodle Jump and then it became, you know, it's cyclical. And the reason is because there's no real uh, emotional investment that you have because you own assets in the game, you own things within them. And it's really interesting the way that the mind shifts when you own something and that you're invested in something and into an ecosystem and then can grow within that ecosystem. My wife right. has always been kind of, you know, she's not skeptical, but she's not as, you know, tech savvy and like crypto and investing. She was never really a part of it. You know, when NFTs, when I showed her NFTs for the first time and I showed her, I remember a cool cat, right? And it kind of looked like a Sanrio kind of Hello Kitty like thing. She immediately got it. She's like, okay, well, this is basically like a digital art. And as soon as she invested in the cool cat, she was curious about everything related to that. And there's my picture of my daughter right. there standing outside of a, a building in Miami. My wife was curious about everything related to the cool cat's ecosystem. Yeah. What are they going to do next? And what can my cool cat do? And all of a sudden, because she had that ownership, she was then invested, not just financially, but invested emotionally into where the story was going. And so fascinating to see where, what the, what's going to do with uh, toys and games and all that stuff when we can replicate the imagination and the investment that kids and people of all ages have with their physical toys but put them now into a digital world where the possibilities are limitless and endless. So ownership means a lot, not just from a financial standpoint, but from an emotional standpoint too. Yeah. I think, you know, with Pokemon that they've kind of, you know, pioneered that whole aspect of it, you know, that whole translatable ability to kind of create not only an iconic presence within someone's, yes. you know, mind of what they want, but also the valuation of what that card is worth or, if you get into the digital aspects of it. So I, I would agree with that 100%. Last question for you yep. is gamers. And this is yep. this is kind of where there is a bit of a rub in the industry. And you've got AAA gaming houses who are really struggling with their gamer communities of converting to NFT in-game assets, et cetera. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of gamer pushback saying, hey, wait a minute, this should be free to play. I always want to have fun with this. Um, however, the alternative to that, and it's a good argument, is that why can't you do both, you know, still right. be, have a, a great time with all your favorite games, but also to your point, get into have that proof of ownership. And when you look at the pushback from traditional gamers, do you think it's just a matter of time before these traditional gamers come over to the dark side <laughs> and get into, <laughs> into, into NFTs? So yeah, you make a great point there. And yes, that is, there is current backlash with, with traditional gamers, but yeah. You, you just made a great example. We've seen this movie before. We just saw it five to seven years ago when free to play as a concept was introduced for the first time. Yeah. I remember when free to play became a thing and all of a sudden you had a free game that you can install or download. Then all of a sudden there was monetary requests throughout like little microtransactions. Sure game was revolted in like a huge, huge way. They said, this is going to ruin the industry. This is ruining gaming. Just charge me the money up front. I want to know yeah. exactly what I'm paying. I don't want free to play. Now it's accepted as an industry standard and gamers right. quite enjoy free to play because they like to get involved and then choose what they want to spend if they want to spend yeah. anything, if not For at sure. all. So that's happening again in the NFT space where again, change is hard. Uh, gamers say, hey, uh, you know, don't, 
mess up the way that I want to play games. And it's really not about that. It's more kind of accentuating the experiences and making it even better. Like free to play did it. Free to play brought a lot of new action investment, a lot of new gamers into the space. You know, NFTs will do the same thing. Uh, and and it, it really does feel somewhat broken that I can get a physical copy of Halo, for example, right, on Xbox right. and go to GameStop and sell it to GameStop or, yeah, exactly. or someone on eBay. But yet if I bought a digital copy from Microsoft uh, and installed it on uh, you know, my Xbox, I, can, I have no rights to that whatsoever and I cannot resell that. To me, that is fundamentally broken as the world gets more and more digital. So I think uh, as the new generation becomes more uh, into gaming, you know, again, my daughter who's eight and nine, she plays iPad games, but eventually she'll move to console games and things like that. Right. I really believe that 20, 30 years from now, our kids are gonna look at us and say, hey dad, you mean to tell me you played 50 hours in that game to get items and didn't actually own them. Yeah, and didn't that, get them. <laughs> that's crazy. What do you mean? Yeah. Like, to, it, it's going to be baffling to them. So I just yeah. think it's a matter of time before this becomes the norm. Change is hard, um, but uh, you know, it it, it, yeah. it comes around and it's for everybody's better benefit. Yeah, this is and this is something you know, I've had a chance to experience in with just mm -hmm. the Nintendo Switch, and especially if you go yeah. with the digital assets versus the cards themselves. You know, the my two kids who are real close together, they can swap cards easily, no big deal. We yes. can sell those cards down the road. But once you get into the digital game, it's pretty much on the console itself and getting it over to right. another, you know, the N Nintendo Switch is like an act of, you know, Congress oh, yes. to get it done. So I, I completely see this and I eventually I can't imagine that the traditional game companies aren't going to some point, at some point, start to see the right. light of where this goes and what that future might hold for sure. Hey, listen, totally. Will, it's been great. Yeah, it's been great having you on. I, I'm very excited about Cryptoids. I'm definitely going to check into you guys a little bit more. I'm very, uh, very bullish on where blockchain is going to be in the gaming community, but even more so, I, I love it in the entertainment side, which obviously are going to be toys will be a big part of that. So uh, thanks again for stopping in today. We appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you for having me. You bet. All right, so you guys are tuned in over on the podcast right now. Listen, you can catch our other podcast, which is TechPath Crypto, easy to do. Just search it right here on iTunes or Spotify, wherever you're listening right now. But really the best place for you to catch all of Metaverse Insider's content and all of our stuff here from the network is on our YouTube channel. That's the number one spot to go. Make sure and hit like and subscribe when you find us there. That'll get you notified of all of our live streams, all the good stuff that we do. You can also jump into the Diamond Circle, which is our, our a weekly email that we send out a couple times a week. We do a lot of breakdowns, both on metaverse topics, gaming topics, as well as traditional crypto. Don't miss any of that. If you guys want to catch me, it's out on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on Metaverse Insider.